Hey, how are we doing there guys and gals? I hope you're all having an awesome day today, as per usual. Now today I'm out riding on this lovely dusky evening on the Kawasaki ZZR 1400, my pride and joy. And in today's video we're going to be going over the seven reasons why motorcycles are just the best. Let's get to it. Now before we get started, I just want to make something very, very clear. I am trying to get more of you guys into motorcycles. Now there are lots and lots of cons to riding motorcycles. I will do another video about that in the near future. But for this video, I'm going to try convincing you that motorcycles are just the best. They just are. <laughs> I think you'll find that the vast majority of motorcycle people will say the exact same thing, that motorbikes are just the best. They're the best means of transportation in the sense that they are the most fun and what have you. Anyway, so the first reason, let's get into it. The very first reason why motorcycles are the best is because they are cheap to run. In a general sense, or for the most part, motorcycles are generally cheaper to run than almost any other form of transport. Now I'm not including scooters in this, literally just motorcycles. Bikes that have gears that are manual. I've ridden scooters in the past and yeah, they're, they're great fun, but they're not motorcycles. They're just not motorcycles. But anyway, they are cheap to run when you compare them to, say, vans, cars, uh, even like trains and things. They're cheaper to run than trains and you could even say buses, which is quite a big statement. But let's be honest here, buses are, cr are pretty cheap, especially in this country, buses are quite cheap. So how on earth can you get a motorcycle that is cheaper to run than getting the bus every day? Well, of course, if you buy a bike like this, the ZZR 1400, then it is going to set you back perhaps more than most other bikes out there, except for maybe like the Hayabusa, the Hayabusa and bikes like the Blackbird might set you back a little bit uh, or very similarly, it might set you back very similarly to this bike. But if you get a 250, a 300, a 125, they're all going to run you pretty cheap. Even for younger people, riding a 125 if you're on a CBT is pretty cheap, it's, it's pretty reasonable, when, especially when you compare it to bus rides and things like that. If you're living in a big city and you have to travel, you know, from one side of the city to the other, it's more than likely going to be quicker on a motorcycle and it's probably going to be the same price, if not cheaper to run. But this point that I'm making isn't necessarily meant towards public transport. This is meant towards comparing it to something like a car, a van, you know, other, other personal means of transport. And they are significantly cheaper to run than cars in almost every aspect, in things like taxis. Nowadays, you can get cars that are 30 pounds per year in tax. And that's pretty damn cheap. But any cars that were made before like 2015 or 2014, they're in a higher tax band. So you're expecting to pay at least £100 a year, maybe even £200 a year. My girlfriend's, uh, one of my girlfriend's cars, it was a Peugeot 206 from 2005. And the cost of the tax was more than the cost of the insurance each year uh, you know I think it was like 300 pounds a year now on a motorcycle it doesn't really matter what motorcycle it is it's almost like a flat 90 pound per year which is I think uh, under six pounds per month it's like 587 per month something like that so for road tax motorcycles are really cheap and also things like fuel economy generally on motorcycles is pretty damn good. Don't get me wrong though, cars have come a long way, especially in recent years, with regard to their economy, uh, miles per gallon and things like that. 
we have an Audi TT from 2019 and a Honda Civic from 2017 and they're both able to get 50 miles a gallon which is pretty pretty amazing whereas this bike <laughs> I mean this bike isn't built for efficiency it's, it's it's running about 40 to 45 mpg so it's still pretty competitive even though this is a stupidly high performance machine so yeah they're pretty cheap to run insurance as well is usually cheaper but of course depending on where you live I mean in the UK at least insurance uh, is supposed to cover the rider not the not the motorcycle itself whereas in other countries in Europe I'm pretty sure that insurance works the opposite way around where they're insuring the value of the car rather than the rider or the driver even on my CBR 600 R from Honda from 2003 bearing in mind I'm able to get about 40 mpgs out of it and I am not riding that bike in an economic way whatsoever honestly bikes motorcycles are really really cheap to run there is something to be said about insurance in the sense that if you don't have a garage to put the motorcycle in overnight then your insurance might run you a little bit higher from that standpoint but for the most part insurance premiums are mainly based on how long you've had the vehicle for what mileage you're expected to do each year and your experience and your address those those few metrics right there are the main causes for spikes or slumps in your insurance costs now I'm actually thinking of releasing a video in the near future about how to make your insurance cheaper and what tricks you can employ on comparison sites and things like that because it's all done online it's all done on algorithms and you can kind of cheese the algorithms to make your insurance cheaper but also be legit you know like you're not necessarily lying about things on your insurance application but you're bending the truth ever so slightly I'm thinking of releasing a video like that in, at some point in the near future so if you're interested in that let me know in the comments and and what have you and I'll, I'll make that happen now on to the next point and staying along the same lines as the cost of the bike or its running costs is upkeep is price to performance is ridiculous for a motorcycle absolutely ridiculous in our review of the ZZR 1400 this bike here that I'm riding right now I make the point that this bike brand new costs 16,000 pounds now that might sound like a lot for just a motorcycle but when you consider the performance that you get it's on par with a Bugatti Chiron you know most hypercars out there will struggle to keep up with this bike and these cars are millions and millions of pounds or dollars the Bugatti Veyron for example a car that was the king of speed for production cars it was only toppled a couple of years ago I think by the Chiron but that was the fastest car in the world this bike is faster it just it just plain is it's not faster in top speed but it is significantly faster in acceleration so I mean this is an extreme example so the ZR 1400 obviously is you know along with the Hayabusa it's kind of like hyper class motorcycles they're, they're not regular motorcycles bikes that you that you'll find usually on the streets however they are they are getting popular I, I see quite a lot of high boosters about and I see quite a lot of ZZRs about so you know they, they, they are remaining popular but price to performance on even smaller bikes half the size bikes, 600s for example 650s motorcycles like those are just uh, ridiculous the the CBR 600RR again I'll, I'll reference that and I'll also reference my old ER6 as well from 2008 so the ER6 when I bought it cost me £2,800 that's it £2,800 and the performance of that was enough to beat out almost every car on the street granted you'll get things like 
Honda Civic Type R's, Focus STs that will beat that bike for sure. At least in a straight line drag race. It'll be close, I think, but I think the ER6 would would get beaten, I think, in that race. But the CBR 600 rr it's stupid quick. Honestly, it, it can take on anything, almost anything, even that 600 rr Granted, uh, cars such as, you know, Ferraris and Bugattis and Aston Martins and McLarens, they're going to beat a 600cc motorcycle. And even uh, turbo cars, uh, BMWs, you know, some of their higher end cars, uh, they, they have the potential to beat out a, a 600RR or any, any race replica motorcycle, it doesn't have to be the 600RR, but basically any in that class are really, really quick. Honestly, ridiculously quick. And again, that 600 double R set me back 3,000 pounds. Okay, it was from 03, it's an old bike, but for that kind of performance, if you were looking to buy that kind of performance in a car, you, you're gonna be looking to spend well over 50,000 pounds for a new one, and probably around about 30 or 40 K for a used car that has that kind of performance, maybe even more than that, to be perfectly honest. So yeah, price to performance on motorcycles is well, well above cars, for sure. So that's another reason why motorcycles are just so amazing, even cruisers. Cruisers are not built for speed and they are still, they're still quick bikes, man. But the next point is filtering. Very easy one. Most of you probably, probably already know this, you know. Drivers are jealous of motorcycle people, especially when they're stuck in gridlock traffic and you just get this motorcyclist passing all the traffic. Filtering is a massive benefit to riding bikes, to riding motorcycles, they, they are. Yeah, I don't think I have to say too much on this particular topic. Uh, they're just so, so easy to get around towns and things. Of course, you are gonna get the extreme examples of cruisers and big heavy bikes, big heavy tourers that aren't going to filter but they're not designed for that they're designed for this kind of riding the cross-country riding and again if you're a city a city person there is a motorcycle out there for you to get you from one side of the city to the other much quicker than almost any other form of transport anyway we will skip over that one a little bit prematurely just because i I, everyone knows, everyone knows filtering is a massive benefit, perhaps one of the biggest benefits to riding a motorcycle. The next one might sound a bit odd, but motorcycles produce great sounds. For the most part, motorcycles above 400cc, they have great sounds, even in stock form. This ZZR, for example, has an amazing sound in stock form. My CBR has an amazing sound in stock form. Granted, these bikes are four cylinders, and I do like the sound of four cylinders over, say, two cylinders or single cylinders. I do, I do prefer four cylinders. But honestly, because depending on the kind of motorcycle that you buy, like if you get a sport bike, it's gonna sound good. It just is. If you get a sport Sora, for the most part, it's gonna sound great. And if you wanna get that same experience in a car, then you're probably looking at aftermarket parts, aftermarket exhaust, uh, aftermarket intakes, force induction, superchargers, turbochargers. If you wanna get the nice cool sound on a car at least, then yeah, you're probably gonna be looking to spend some extra money on some aftermarket parts which come stock basically on a motorcycle at least on sport bikes for the most part but then again uh, things like dirt bikes 
adventure bikes. I still think they sound good. Right, I'm actually struggling to see here. Yeah, even dirt bikes, they, they sound good themselves. Adventure bikes sound good. KTMs, you know, you get a 790 Duke. That sounds pretty damn cool. So, yeah, you're gonna get some pretty cool sounds from most motorcycles. I have to say, things like gold wings, touring bikes, I, I don't know about those that much, so I couldn't really comment on them. But hey, any of you gold wing owners, let me know what you think of the sound of your bike. All right, on to another easy one. Parking. Come on. This is an easy one. Again, like a lot of these points are for city riders, granted. But parking in the city, you can park anywhere. Even paid parking areas, here in the UK at least. The parking areas that I have been, that I have parked in, they've been free for motorcycles. They have a specific part just for motorcycles and it's free. Yes, yeah, it's just a really, really easy point to make. Again, to just wind up car drivers. But it is just totally true. Parking a motorcycle in almost any city is pretty straightforward. Now I say that, there was an experience I had uh, really early on in my bike, in my uh, uh, biker career, I was on my my 125 at the time, and I parked in a town somewhere where there were bicycles parked. And I've seen in cities before where motorcycles have been parked next to bicycles or on bicycle racks. I've seen that plenty of times, but I got a ticket for it, and. I was really annoyed because I'd seen other motorcycles being parked there, yet yeah, no tickets. I don't know if that's just because they were lucky or what have you, but I was really annoyed. And they basically put a ticket on there saying that, well, the, the reason why they put a ticket on was because I was parked over double yellow lines. Where I wasn't parked over double yellows, but the road itself uh, to access the the bike rails, they they that was a double yellow line. So I suppose watch out for bike rails. If you're going to find somewhere to park on a motorcycle, try and find somewhere official that you can park. A parking lot, a parking area, right in the middle of the town. For the most part, you'll probably find that they're free for parking all day, no restrictions. So keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, if, if you do have to park somewhere else, if you're gonna try and park on bike racks or something like that, just make sure there are no double yellow lines on the road or, you know, or parking restrictions in that area because more than likely they're gonna stick a ticket on you. So yeah, parking is significantly easier on a motorcycle than it is a car especially around here at least anyway, and, and I, I assume that it's like that in most places. Uh, I went to Bristol last year, really easily found a place to park for a motorcycle that was completely free, no problems, also plenty of space, plenty of room. There were other motorcycles parked there, right in the center of Bristol, and you can access everything, everything from, from there, so yeah definitely a massive perk to being able to park basically anywhere you want on a motorcycle. So the next point is variety. There's a lot of variety in motorcycles and arguably there's more variety in motorcycles than there are cars. Um, in the video that I did about how to choose the right motorcycle I'll have it linked up there in the top corner for you. I list all the bikes off the top of my head that I know. And there was about eight or nine, maybe even 10 different types of motorcycles that I listed just off the top of my head. Now there's one thing here that 
I, I have to make it clear. Motorcycles are made for fun. Complete fun. I'm being, I'm being serious. Name a motorcycle that's not designed for fun, other than scooters. Remember, this video is not about scooters. Most of the videos that I do are not about scooters. So don't, don't kind of include those in your thoughts. But name a motorcycle that is not fun. At least from the perspective of an independent rider. So like if you're not into dirt bikes, then obviously you're not going to think dirt bikes are fun, right? If you're not into cruises, you're not going to think cruises are fun. But no, I mean, like name a motorcycle that was built for, for practicality, for usability, as a workhorse. There are very few, very few out there, at least that I can think of. Even bikes like Goldwings that are supposed to be one of the, you know, some of the most practical bikes in the world. These tourers are supposed to be really practical. Adventure bikes are supposed to be really practical with all of their storage capacities and panniers and top boxes and tank bags, you know, places to put storage. They're all fun. They're all fun bikes. They're all built to be fun and entertaining for the rider. Now that's what I mean by variety. There are a lot of different ways that you can have fun on a motorcycle, whether if it's riding it off-road, whether if it is touring, whether if it's city riding, whether if it's, you know, uh, country roads, anything. There is a motorcycle that is made for that, whatever it is that you are into, whatever it is that you want to do. There's such a variety out there, and let's compare cars here. So cars, there are sports cars, there are sedans, there are estate cars, there are uh, four by fours, there are pickups. And granted, probably each of those cars do have their own fun factor. But do you think they're gonna be as fun as a motorcycle? Do you really? <laughs> I, I would argue that, that they don't have as much fun factor as a motorcycle. Especially just because the sheer volume of different bikes that you can get for the same re for the same thing, you know. Like you want a city rider, you can get a KTM Duke. You can get a 790 Duke. You can ride that around the city. You can ride it cross country. You can ride it just about anywhere. You can even ride it off road, and it'll be an amazing experience. You can get a Hayabusa and do all the same things and it'll be a great experience. I have to say though, uh, for big bikes, city riding is not necessarily their forte, but they can still be done. There's such a variety of different bikes that can do all sorts of different things, but, but it's, it's not just that, it's their seating positions, the amount of power that they have, their rideability, their sound, they're all different, all of them. And you just don't have that variety in cars. Like, yeah, okay, you can have a sports car. You can have, I don't know, a, a Focus ST or a Focus RS. You could have an Audi TT RS. You could have an Audi A3 RS. You could have, I don't know, a BMW 1 Series. You know, they're all fun cars. They're all great cars, don't get me wrong. But then you have cars such as a Citroen Zara Picasso. <laughs> Uh, you have you have a Honda Jazz, you have a Toyota Yaris. And these cars are just made for utility reasons. They're not made for fun. I suppose you could make them fun. You could slap on an exhaust. You could slap on a turbo. But you could you can't really do too much with them, to be perfectly honest. And with motorcycles, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do anything to a motorbike, honestly. Like, I, I know that there's a lot of people that like to mod them. You don't have to. Motorcycles are great as they are. You don't have to touch them. But that's what I mean by that. There's a lot of variety and fun factor in almost any bike that you buy. Any bike. You know, even 50 cc's, 125 cc's, 250's, you can still have buckets of fun on bikes like those. Granted, they're gonna be slow, but they're gonna be fun nonetheless. 
my final point, the seventh point. This is a very, very difficult point to kind of articulate. And that's freedom. Like, you can get in a car, you can drive wherever you want. It's not the same experience, even though you are perfectly free to go wherever you want in a car, exactly the same way as you're on a motorcycle. But it is different, completely different. It's a completely different experience. And there's just nothing like being literally out on the open road, traveling 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 miles an hour and just feeling that wind, hearing that sound. There's nothing like this experience. I, I'm trying to come up with some comparisons to, you know, for you guys that don't ride motorcycles yet, or maybe you're looking to ride a motorcycle in the near future. I'm trying to think of comparisons to kind of, you know, explain the feeling, but there isn't. I suppose it's the same feeling that surfers get or skateboarders or skiers I, I, it's probably that same experience where you're able to travel at some pretty quick speeds and you have just just that feeling that it is you doing that speed in a car you, you accelerate in a car you don't feel that wind you don't feel that adrenaline you don't feel that excitement whereas when the wind hits you on a bike as you're accelerating you know it's real you know that this is the speed that you're traveling at uh, I'm trying to think of, of other things parachuting that's probably an extreme example but skydiving these are all similar experiences like not not physically similar but the experience is very similar your uh, you know serotonin dopamine all these chemicals that get released in your brain from having these experiences you get this you get all of them on a motorcycle but it's very very difficult to explain to a non-rider and even riders that are on scooters or, uh, or you know small bikes it's not the same as being on a, a 500 a 750 a 600 a one liter it's not the same I think you do get a similar experience on a 300 or a 400 I think you would have a similar experience but there's this sense of freedom that you get I don't know what it is but you feel like you can go anywhere and do anything Apart from when you're stuck behind slow cars, it seems. <laughs> Let's see if we can get past them. Because I'm pretty sure this road here is national speed limit. So 60 mile an hour. It might, uh, it might be 50 actually, but look, they're not even doing 40. It's a bend. Yeah, it's a bend. Can't take them yet. You know, things like this, the forest, you get to experience this firsthand, almost like you can reach out and touch it. Whereas you can't in a car. I'm gonna get past this person now. Yeah, sense of freedom is perhaps one of the biggest perks to a motorcycle and you will not get that from anything else like yeah you can do other things that feel similar that they release the same chemicals in your brain but it is a different experience it is satisfying you can release anger you can release stress riding on a motorcycle you can have a thrill you can have a chill you can have a cruise you can rip up twisties there's so many things that you can get out of a motorcycle that you can't get out of in a car. And I probably haven't even listed half of the things there that a motorcycle does better at than a car in terms of 
the way you feel about it, the experience you get. And right now, I'm riding without a jacket on. It, for me today, it was just too warm to ride with a jacket on. Tomorrow, it's meant to be 27 degrees across this this part of the world. So it's uh, it enhances the experience. For me, I can feel the wind on my arms cooling me down. You know, I'm not even riding all that quickly. It's a 50 mile an hour road. I'm doing less than 50 mile an hour just cruising and I'm having the time of my life. And it saddens me to go home. I just want to be doing this all day and all night. And I don't think you can say that about a car. I don't know about you guys, but if I go on a long journey in a car, I can't wait to get out of the damn car when I've gone to the end, you know? On a bike, on a motorcycle, I don't have that feeling. I just want to ride into the sunset. It's kind of poetic. It's kind of romantic in that sense. You know? Anyway, guys, enough sentimental stuff. Motorcycles are the best. End of. Full stop. Period. Motorcycles are just the best. And honestly, if you have not ridden, or if you're thinking about riding, do it. Honestly, just do it. It will be an experience that you will never, ever want to put down. It's just that good. I promise. I wish, I wish I could lie to you. I, I am being completely genuine about the way how I feel and the things that I'm saying right now. Completely 100% genuine. Yes, there are problems. Yes, there are cons to riding motorcycles as there are cons to doing just about anything in life. But the pros outweigh the cons. One million to one. And that's not an exaggeration. Anyway guys, that'll do for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've convinced you to get up and get out on your bike. Or for those of you that don't ride yet, I hope I've convinced you to buy that first bike. Do your CBT, get your full test done and experience what we experience as much as we possibly can. It's just glorious, just glorious, especially on days like today. Anyway, I won't keep you any longer, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.